Hello, this is a special edition of Art 117. I'm recording this on Friday during the noon hour, during my office hour. So this could be a really wild thing where people might be showing up for my office hour and you might be from 117 to ask me questions about this morning's presentation. Might even have some sculpture students in here uh, knocking on the door. I have no idea. But this morning's Art 117 <clears throat> was interrupted when some kind of a glitch made my computer freeze up. And when I tried to log back on to Zoom, <clears throat> I was unable to record the session that I was presenting. So I went ahead and presented a whole session on um, trying to draw out our concepts a little bit as three-dimensional drawings. And then from there, try to draw them out as pat pattern pieces on paper and um, I thought I heard something just now. Um, all of the uh, original people who were in the class this morning were still uh, logged on and I thought that you were there, but nobody said anything. So I'm not sure, I'm not certain whether anybody joined me for the second half of my presentation. So I'm gonna repeat it. Uh, now I'm also recording it too. I think I'm hearing very low voices in the background. Is somebody there? All right. Um, again, with the electronics and the glitches and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and try to do this as a demonstration. And so here we go. I'm going to change my video to um, the uh, correct camera because, you know, it's always nice to do it with the right camera. And so now we're here on my desktop. And I'm going to try to attempt to do this again um, <clears throat> from scratch. Um, I was reminded the other day when a student came in uh, to consult with me that sometimes this stuff is kind of hard to figure out if you don't do a lot of drawing. And um, this might be a completely, you know, totally new kind of concept for you. And so I'm going to do the the chair that um, uh, Daniela Vimbala was working on and see if I can figure this one out once again for you guys. She brought in a really interesting, simple kind of a chair concept that um, kind of went like this and came up to a seat form that was about here. And so the seat kind of went back there and back that way and back this way. And the uh, back corner of the chair was there and there was a little carry handle right here. And so that's kind of what the chair was like. Now she was having trouble actually getting this drawing to kind of look correct and present well. And I think what was throwing her off were these two things that kind of came down like this. In fact, I don't even have it right. Shoot. Well, this is good. This is all right. I can, I can repeat this using this as like my preliminary drawing. What I really wanted to do is come down to here with both of these things because her thing actually came down to these two points on the seat and these little uh, triangles were kind of the sides of the chair and they sort of wanted to be um, arms on the chair. And so we're gonna redraw this. See, it's not easy drawing three-dimensional objects and trying to figure them out. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna draw the side of the chair and this piece came all the way down to there and <clears throat> have another one kind of up over here. I'm gonna do it this way so I can get you a little bit more of the isometric drawing concept. So the seat of the chair is right here. And the seat, this line should be parallel with this line. I think what throws us off, this kind of uh, between these two things right here should be parallel to this, which is going to be the seat back, and parallel to this, which is the top of the uh, back of the chair. And so this comes straight up and this comes down at a triangle. Okay, I think I've got this now. So from what she showed me, I thought that she had something that was a um, 
kind of like a planar element that came right down in the center of the chair um, that kind of, I thought it uh, was right underneath the seat of the chair right here. And so this would have been a planar element here. And so this would be, this parallelogram right here is the seat surface of the chair right here like this. And the dotted lines are the parts that we can't see. And <clears throat> so her thing kind of looked like that. So let's try to get this drawn out here in ink so you guys can see it better. So this looked like a folded chair that possibly was available on Pinterest or someplace as a chair design that somebody had done. And I don't mind if you guys want to try um, working with an already existing design, that's fine because this is so hard and you are sophomores and freshmen and many of you are not design majors. So you know what, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Um, if you can just manage to, um, to get something like this going and get it successfully designed out and a scale model of it built, that would be fantastic too. So here we go. I'm going to put this one aside. So this was sort of the idea that this would be a cardboard chair that um, had like a sheet of cardboard that came down this side and that had a fold back here at this corner and came across and it had another fold on this corner back here and came forward. Now, I don't know if this is actually open on the back or if this is like a, a solid uh, piece of cardboard on the back. I'm almost assuming that it might be a solid piece of cardboard on the back. So how to make a, um, how to make a pattern for something like this? Well, I'm assuming that this, this right here is a triangle that is original piece of cardboard. A fold happened right here and this triangle folded down on top of this triangle and maybe glued in right here to this interior surface of the chair. So thinking that, I would maybe lay this chair out something like this, where this rectangle of cardboard is this rectangle of cardboard here on the back side of the chair. And this piece is gonna be the fold line where this part folds over and down to create these diagonal um, chair edges uh, that uh, kind of help to unify and hold up the back of the chair to the front of the chair. So then if we're going to fold around here, then we've got this rectangle of cardboard that is the back of the chair. So the back of the chair would be the next element to work with. And I don't know, I was assuming that it might be a little bit wider than the side of the chair, but maybe it would be the same width and so these might either be the same size rectangles or not and i think that the seat is going to fold in something like this <clears throat> or that's going to be the edge of where the seat goes and then coming around to this side of the chair we need another one of these this is going to be the other side of the chair that goes like this with <clears throat> this let's see I've got that folded the wrong way. Okay, so this is gonna fold this way instead. And this is gonna fold this way. It folds from the seat back down to the front edge of the chair. This triangle, again, folds this way and in like that. So we're gonna have those two triangles folding in like that. So this would be the pattern for the chair without its seat. And then I was trying to figure out how to do this seat. How, how would I make a strong structural seat that would, um, that would work and kind of slot in there with this, um, this plane in the middle of the chair? And so if I just take that one piece out and kind of analyze it a little bit, that one piece would go something like this and the chair seat would go like this as a square on top of it. And I'm thinking how to make that really, really strong. How would a person make that super strong? Uh, 
that's a good question. <clears throat> if I doubled that up so that there were two plies of this with a fold down here at the bottom, that might be one way to do it. Um, 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 how was I going to do this? And so this would fold out this way, and this would fold out this way. And it could come around in both ways. And it, it might even fold down into itself into the middle here. That could be a way of doing it. That's another way of doing it. If I did it that way, this element would hopefully be a fairly strong uh, seat. And it transfers a lot of the weight bearing right down to the floor here in this flange that goes down to the floor. So this is the seat here in the chair with this um, internal um, bulkhead kind of thing in the middle of the chair. So what, what I need is to try to figure out how to attach this to this wraparound outside portion of the chair. And I was thinking maybe this would be like something that would have slots and tabs. And so if there were tabs for this that came out this way and, and tabs that came out this way, that might be one way of doing it. And so the tabs would go through slots in the cardboard here. Here's a slot, here's a slot in the outer piece of cardboard. And then the tabs could be pushed through those and with, with slots and tabs, you could then, um, and where would these slots be? These, these slots would be here and here and here and here. And so these tabs in the seat would fit into these slots in the chair slot, slot, so that um, this thing would all kind of fit tab, tab and slot together in the chair. And then we might have to have a couple of them here and here in slots going, you know, through the chair side, this, um, through the side of the chair, like here and here and here and here. So those would be the slots cut in the wraparound portion of the chair. And then these would be the tabs that stick out that would lock this center portion into the wraparound portion of the chair. And so we'd have to have tabs that were sticking out here and here and here and here. Anyway, when you start to try to figure out how this thing is gonna to go together, we're, we also are challenged with, you know, how are we going to fasten it together? How does it interact? How does it interlock together? Is it going to have slots and tabs? Is it just going to have glue tabs on it? Because instead of slots and tabs, these could just be glue tabs that bend down underneath the, the seat of the chair. And we could just apply glue to them and glue along these two surfaces here so that we're gluing this chair seat in, into this wraparound framework uh, for the sides and the back of the chair. So that, that could be one way of doing it. Anyway, looking at this seat and trying to expand it out, what would that look like? Well, it would probably look something like this. Um, <clears throat> how did I do this before? <clears throat> Instead of doing it the way that I've got it drawn out here, I'm gonna draw the seat first in the center of my drawing. So this is the seat, and then I'm going to um, then I'm going to have um, half of the seat, half the width of the seat is the part that's going to be wrapping around and bending underneath the seat, and then these pieces that drop down here to the floor would go down like this, the length of the chair from the seat, the seat height of the chair all the way to the floor, and so. This would be um, not drawn to scale, but this would be a way of doing this seat like this so that you wound up with a T-shaped seat. This surface, this square right here in the center is the top of the T. Let's uh, forget about this thing in the middle here and we'll just have this top solid. So this would be the top. These two shorter segments would be the parts that would bend underneath the top of the seat. And then these two segments on the outsides would both drop down 
together like this. And that would give you this T-shaped seat with a support underneath of it. And that T-shaped seat is this piece right here that fits inside this, this outer wraparound portion of the chair. So that is kind of a way of figuring out how to do um, Ms. Bambala's, Garcia's um, chair. Um, let's see, uh, Daniela. Daniela's chair would go something like this. I just used up all of my paper, my uh, clean paper that I had for this process, so I can't do another one. But what I'm interested in doing is working with you guys. If you want to, I am happy to have individual meetings with you where you can make an appointment, come in and talk to me, bring your idea, bring your drawing, and then we can try together to work out what it looks like as a, um, as a uh, what do you call this, an, iso, an isometric drawing. We can take then, I can... I can try to analyze this and lay it out flat, unfold it and lay it out flat in my mind and draw it out as pieces, as pattern pieces that then we can draw one more time by using a measured drawing technique to figure out what are the sizes of these things and how does it all lay out as pattern pieces on a piece of cardstock so that we can get the, all of the elements drawn out for your chair, then we can cut them out and actually fold them and glue them together to make your uh, chair model. Because we have to make the three-dimensional scale model of your chair in 1 12th uh, scale so that we can then scale it up to the full-size cardboard chair sometime next week or in the week after. So this is a very important part of the process that I feel like a lot of you guys are getting bogged down on. And I want to try to help you, you know, as much as I can figure out where you're where the holdups are, where your barriers are, and um, help you draw this out so that you can get this down on paper for the building portion of this project. So please don't hesitate to email me um, to uh, make an appointment. Um, I can do this over my office hour, 12 o'clock, over the noon hour every day. I, I can be available for you guys to come in for individual consultations. I can schedule you times throughout the rest of the day, any day of the week, um, but you'll have to actually um, email me and tell me what your, um, what times you're available and when you, when you could come in for a consultation. So this was kind of a quick and dirty rehash of what I did this morning. I don't know whether you guys saw it this morning or not, but at least on this occasion, I was able to um, uh, record it so that I can put it up on YouTube and then it's there for you guys to be able to see it. Because that's really the point of all of this is being able to do these things as demonstrations and then put it up on YouTube so that it's accessible for you guys at any time. This was a 15 minute one, re relatively short, painless, but I just wanted to walk us through once again, the idea of drawing something from just an image and then trying to start understanding how to um, design the elements that would go into it and how those elements will interact with each other and get folded up and plug into each other as three-dimensional um, modular pieces of your scale model. So having said all that, um, I'm going to post this on YouTube so you guys can find it. And again, I'll see you guys on Monday morning at nine o'clock. Have a good weekend.